So, I want to talk about laziness. I don't believe that laziness particularly exists. I think we all have different mindsets and different motivations and our mind creates these motivations and whatever is going to give us the most pleasure is something that we're going to do and something that uh, creates the least pleasure is something that we're going to avoid and a lot of this comes down to perspective and how we problem solve certain things. So I used to think that I was lazy. A lot of people thought that I was lazy. Um, and the reason it, that people thought I was lazy, including myself, were because I wouldn't clean certain things. I had a very poor personal hygiene. I didn't have a teeth routine uh, consistently. Uh, when I was a child, it was pretty much nothing at all. Um, yeah, but yeah, my hygiene was bad. My cleaning um, wasn't very consistent. Um, and my grades growing up weren't the best. Um, things like that. Things like that that led people to believe that I was lazy. And I did internalize that and thought that I was lazy. But as I've grown and as I have taught other people, I am realizing that laziness doesn't exist. It's literally your perspective and your motivations to do certain things. And your perspectives can absolutely be linked to trauma. For things of the simplest things and your lack of motivation can be due to mental health. So when it came to my personal hygiene, I didn't take care of myself hygiene wise because I didn't care enough about myself to keep up with it. And because I didn't keep up with it, I didn't have an automatic routine like other people did. Um, you know, when you're a kid, you are pretty much taught this cleanliness routine and then it just becomes automatic. Uh, I did not have that automatic routine when I was a child because I was mentally ill as a child. I was depressed. I was anxious because of the environment that I was growing up in. Um, and as a result of that, I never grew into an automatic routine of hygiene, and I never saw myself as uh, worthy enough, let's say, to take care of myself, to have that kind of routine. And so my motivation for hygiene, for example, was very low to the bar. Like, if I don't care about myself, why should I keep up with my body? Why should I uh, take the time and energy that I have to clean myself if I don't feel like I'm worthy of that action? If that makes sense. So my perspective uh, for me to keep up with my hygiene is to gain self-worth and self-confidence enough to believe that I am worthy enough to 
keep up with a hygiene routine, to keep up with my teeth, to keep up with showers. Um, and in order for that to even be the case, I would have to go through therapy and into genuine healing, which is something that I, I have done. Um, and th just because you're in therapy doesn't mean that you are uh, genuine, genuinely healing. Because in order for genuine healing to take place, you need to be honest about the situations that you are in. And something has, and that situation has to be taken seriously enough to combat it so yes when i was a child i was in therapy a couple of times um i was in school counseling but i didn't have genuine healing because i couldn't tell them about my environment i couldn't and even when some people were aware because of physical appearances, it was or because of some blatant uh, attitude of the parent, um, it it became a, a a little bit obvious of what was going on, but it was never taken seriously. Um, so. I never got into genuine healing until I was in basically trauma therapy, which is different than talk therapy. Um, and that is when my perspective started to change, not just from therapy, but from my environment. My environment was also a big influence on my so finding my self-worth um so in order for me to take care of myself i had to have the environment of other people seeing me as worthy as other people um you know taking an interest in me and me realizing and believing that other people had that type of interest in me and slowly that became the wheels for me to realize like oh i am a human being oh i am worthy enough to recognize myself and to uh, be myself in this world but in order to be myself in this world I have to take care of myself and in order to take care of myself I have to do this this and this which includes hygiene <laughs> and only then did certain routines come into play that makes uh, hygiene and self-care automatic. Um, so I wasn't lazy uh, growing up. I was mentally ill. I was in an environment that didn't suit me, that didn't uh, care for me, you know. Um, I, and I needed another type of environment to show me that other people can care. I needed a space and where I could be myself. I needed a space where I could heal from the previous environment that I was in. And only then did certain things uh, come into place. And with cleaning it, 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 it is a very similar uh, thing. But I realized that uh, cleaning, me avoiding cleaning wasn't me being lazy. It was a literal trauma response. Um, whenever I 
started to clean a certain thing. I had overwhelming sensory issues. I had flashbacks. And... And... Those were reasons why I would avoid uh, cleaning certain things. Some, uh, uh, some of the time I would avoid it altogether. There, uh, because of these reactions, and I didn't like these reactions within me. I didn't know how to cope with these reactions within me. So I would just avoid cleaning certain things to avoid the these reactions that came from trying to clean these things and those reactions were from a trauma response and it again <laughs> it goes uh back to genuine healing um that i began to uh go through um these reactions and have coping skills for these reactions and only then was I able to clean certain things and once I realized I was able to clean certain things without these responses it makes it it made it so much easier for me to clean these things and once I did um and I saw, like, the progress of, like, oh, this looks a lot better. It made it easier to keep doing it. And having the safe, the, the safety to know that these reactions weren't going to happen anymore because of my coping skills and because of my, uh, therapy, um, is how I could clean these things. Uh, I think, I think we give other people a bad rap, and we assume that everyone has the same resources that we do. We assume that everyone has the same upbringing that we do. Everyone assumes that we have the same education that we do. Um... You know, and so it's really easy to look at someone and say, well, they're just doing it because they don't feel like it. They're just lazy. Uh, but I think you need to look at why someone isn't doing something and try to provide uh, solutions to those things. Sometimes it is education. Sometimes it's mental health. Sometimes it's... Uh, a perspective that they need to have a different perspective on. I recently had a different perspective in work, which has made that aspect of work a lot better because my perspective is different. Um, so, I don't think that anyone is lazy. Uh, I don't think anyone doesn't do certain things be just because they don't want to do them. I think there are reasons behind, like, valid reasons behind why someone might not want to do certain things. And we need to tackle and have solutions to these problems. But also keep in mind that there are systems, whole systems in place that make certain things very hard um and until those systems change those reasons won't change those solutions aren't going to be sufficient enough to motivate that person to do certain things um something that comes to mind right now is is work a lot of people are out of the workforce uh because of the pandemic and then a lot of people don't want to go back to work. Why? Mm, from what I've seen, a lot of people um, have had more uh, success with unemployment than they have with employment. 
they don't like how they've been treated at work with uh, working a ton of hours without uh, the paycheck to uh, reflect it. They don't like having little to no benefits. They don't like um, having no days off, etc. These are all things that have uh, made it very hard to motivate a person for employment. But these are all things that are systemic. Um, these are all things in which the entire system would have to change for employment and for unions to get together um, in order to uh, provide a sufficient working force to make employment uh, motivating. Because um, it's not like people don't want to work. Think about hobbies. People work on their own uh, for hours at a time by themselves without pay. Uh, just because they are passionate about something. We're not a, a class of people that uh, isn't productive. We're not a class of people that isn't motivated to work. The... The systems in place for actual employment makes employment hard to work. Um, and we can't just pretend that these system that these systems aren't flawed. We can't pretend that uh, there's certain solutions that just aren't going to be efficient for people. Um, in order for change to happen in any, in any area of life for a person, in order for changes to come within the person, the solutions have to fit and be sufficient enough for that person to be motivated to do that thing. Laziness doesn't exist. The way we go about providing solutions to these barriers is the, so, is the quote unquote solution for laziness. Um, and sometimes that's simple, and sometimes that takes an entire system to change in order to change certain people. Yeah, that's my take.